dared to look at the world just as it is. Let us shed for a moment every preconceived idea. What shape would it show us? What shape? You once said that the problem lies in the inconsistency of the sun. Yes, yes, I did. Good, good. Put it into words. The sun must be at the center, since we revolve around it. And at the same time, in another, another position. position. Since our distance from it varies. Yes, exactly. How? How could it occupy two positions at once? How could it occupy two positions at once? How could it occupy two positions at once? Good, very good. Now tie the scent to that torch. Vespasius, I want you to imagine that this is the Earth, and that each of these flames represent the two extreme positions of the sun in relation to it, in winter and in summer. What would happen if, if both these positions were the two centers of one and the same circle? But it isn't possible, mistress. Wait, what do we know about a circle? We know that the center of a circle is always the same distance from any point along its perimeter. Exactly. Yes, so what if I divide the center into two, but what I keep constant is, is the sum of their two distances to the perimeter? Mm. Oh, all right, look, I'll show you, watch. As I, as I move this rod along the cord, as one segment increases, the other segment decreases, and vice versa. Therefore, the sum of the two is always going to be constant. Do you see that? Now, what if we apply this to the movement of the Earth? What figure will we obtain? An ellipse with the with the sun at one of its foci. Because what is a circle except a very special ellipse whose foci have drawn so close together that they appear to be one? Perhaps I'm completely raving, Vespasius. I mean, I mean, really, why should this be so? Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm. What do you think? It could well be so, mistress. Continue with this tomorrow. Uh, get some sleep. Good night, mistress. Good night.